Okay. Let's talk about, well, hang on here. How about the, dimensional analysis is the topic. Guy, dimensional analysis. Now we kind of started this a little bit yesterday when we looked at the metric system and talked about some of the advantages that it has over the imperial system. Um, if you Google around, there's some really good and interesting and humorous, um, you know, videos that talk about some of the strange units that you have in the uh, imperial or classic system. Um, and all of that's been done away with with the much kind of more streamlined uh, metric system. So anyway, um, one thing that is not metricized, in other words, doesn't really go by powers of 10 is time. Okay. Um, so let's just do a little recall of time. Okay. So we have... Let's, let's start with a decade. A decade is, is 10 years, we know that. Okay. A century is 100. A millennium, I think, is 1,000. Um, okay, um, then we have, you know, one year. And then we have, in one year, we have 365 days. Yeah, that's right. You could also have 12 months in here if you want to go another way. And then there's approximately 30 days per month, but not always. Okay, but it does work out to 365 days um, per year. Yeah, and yes, yes, I agree. Each month is four weeks, uh, roughly four weeks, and four each week has seven days. So we have all sorts of interesting conversions. Now, we don't have a real big problem with that because we're immersed in it all the time. It's what we're used to, right? Someone said all of a sudden, okay, there are, you know, 10 months in a year, 10, you know, um, days in a month or whatever, 10 hours in a day. Everything, you know, as far as our relationship to the sun would be the same, but how and the size of, of say, hours or whatever we redefine as the, as the unit, the metric unit of time would have to change. They actually did try that. <clears throat> they tried to do the metric system with time, um, but there's one major issue with that, and that's this value, okay? This value is set by nature, right? How we divide these things up is fairly, I guess, kind of arbitrary, really. Um, we talked about the relationship to um, 360 from ancient times, right? Um, but, you know, how you know how we have this, this is set by our relationship with the sun, right? Um, and, 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 kind of this, and kind of the same with this, right? So <clears throat> it takes 365 rotations of the Earth for each revolution around the sun, okay? So that's set by nature. That doesn't divide easily by 10. But everything else technically probably could, right? Why is it 12 months? Um, actually, there is a reason why it's 12 months. Why is it 12 months? I'm forgetting something. What else do we mark time by? Besides the way the Earth goes around the sun, what's that? Se okay, well, yeah, seasons are part of it. But what, what other thing am I missing from this little diagram of our place in space? There's one other thing involved. Yeah, the moon, right, the moon. And it takes the moon approximately, right, it takes 28 days to go around. So that's where you get the kind of the length of the month. And this happens 12 times per year and so on. So, so that actually, I shouldn't say this is arbitrary because it's not. It's related to the moon. And when you think of the word month, you can see that it might be related in some way to the moon, right? So 28 days. So that's, that's where all that comes from. Um, I guess not really easily metricized. Although I have heard, but I don't know much about it, um, an attempt way back when, to metricize um, time, okay? Um, obviously not successful because this is the system that we're on. However, um, okay, so once we go below this, we know there's 24 hours in a day. And then there's 60 minutes in an hour. And then there's 60 seconds in a minute, okay? Now below this, time is metric, okay? We're metric below this. So in the metric system, the second is the base unit for time, okay? Um, so generally we talk in terms of seconds when we're talking metric. Um, where we might run into problems though is how do we convert between one unit in metric and another? So let's say, um, who's got an age here that we can go with? Uh, how old are people in here? Okay, so 16 years, how many months? 16 years, two months, okay. What if I want to know how many seconds I've been alive if I'm this age? How would I do that? How many seconds have I been alive? 
do we have the ability to do something like this? Oh, interesting. So, so here's, here's problem number one, right? We have mixed units. These things have different amounts of seconds in them, obviously, right? Two months has a different amount of seconds than years. So we have to put all of this into the same units first. So what's the easiest way to do that? Is it easiest to put it in terms of years or easiest to put it in terms of months? <laughs> let's, I, think, I think maybe let's go with months, okay? Because it's just 16 times 4 for the number of months, or it's 16 years and then 2 twelfths of a year, right? So 16 and 2 twelfths years, I think I'd prefer to just put it into months so we can have like one solid number, hey? What do you think? You could do it 16 and 2 twelfths if you wanted, but I think I'd rather go this way. So we have, um, we have 12 months a year, so can we do 16 times 12? What is it? So we should have 194 months. Okay, so there's the starting point. Now, we're going to use the dimensional analysis technique that we kind of looked at yesterday. Will the number, before we even start, it's good to just, you know, address some numeracy here, thinking in numbers. Will this number that we get for how long you've been alive in seconds be larger or smaller than 194? Larger. A lot larger or a little bit larger? A heck of a lot larger, right? There's a lot of seconds in a month, right? There's 60 in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour. 24 hours in a day, 30 days in a month. I mean, there's going to be a lot of seconds there. So we're looking for a larger number. Sometimes people go and start off and they'll end up with a smaller number and think it's right. Um, and they don't really, I guess they're not really thinking, you know, um, critically about what their answer comes out to be. So let's do this. 194 months. So we want to go, I think, from months to days probably. So, you know, um, is there going to be more than 30 or less than 30? Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Let's just go with 30 days a month, okay? Let's just, I know some months have 31, but let's go with 30. So we would say, for every one month, there's 30 days, okay? This thing that I'm putting in here, this is called the conversion factor, okay? So the conversion factor goes in there. And the goal of the conversion factor is to tell you, you know, essentially what the, what the math is for going forward. So if we look at 194 months, we could, we could write it like this. Couldn't we 194 months over 1? And then what you do is you, you multiply what's on the top by what's on the bottom. And so what's 194 times 30? Um, 600 minus 6,000 What does it work out to be? 5, 8, 20, um, days. And if you look at the units, there's still a months on the top, see? But if we multiply through on the bottom, we also see that there's a month on the bottom, and that's going to cross out. So you could do this without the conversion factor, no problem, but this doing with the conversion factor will come in handy uh, later on. So it's good practice to get it in there. And you know, you don't actually have to write this out and then cross that off. If you see months on the top here, you know when you multiply it through, if you're dividing by something in months, it's going to end up crossing itself off, right? Um, just as a little aside, there is another sort of way to write this out. And I'm just going to show you it works out to be the same thing but let's just see how it looks. So if you don't want to use conversion factors in this kind of like fractional form, um, you could use that sort of other way of writing um, your units over here. So we would say there's 30 days per month, okay? Now you've seen me write per, you know, per hour and, and per second this way before. So if we look, we're multiplying by months, and we're multiplying by the inverse of months. So if you look at it this way, you can just cross them off in line, okay? And that's, I think, kind of the advantage of doing without fractions, okay? Anyways, that's what you end up with after that. Now, if we go to there, we want to know how many hours we have in total, right? So every one day, that has 24 hours. So if we multiply this through, or we look at our other way of doing it, either way works the same. Okay, multiply those together. We're going to get 24 times this in terms of the number of hours. Each day brings 24 hours to the table. We have 50, 20 days. Can someone calculate that for me? 
139680. Okay, now this is getting to be a pretty big number, so I think it's nice to write that in terms of scientific notation. Um, I'm not sure how precise we want to be. We could keep all these digits. I think I'm just going to round it to this. Okay. And what this means essentially is the same as saying 1.4 times um, 100,000. Okay. And then we get this value. And I just rounded this number. Okay. I rounded this number to a 4. So that's why it's 1.4. Okay, so there we go. And this unit should be hours. That's how many hours we have. And we're almost there, aren't we? Can we do the last thing in one step? How many seconds are there in an hour? 3,600. Why? Well, there's, there's 60 seconds in a min. Right? Times 60 min per hour. So 60 times 60, um, mins crosses off. There should be 3,600 seconds per hour. And that's the conversion that we can use there. 3,600 seconds every hour. Okay, And that's going to cross off. When we do this math, we're going to be left in the unit that we want, seconds. Anybody punch that in and tell me what it is? Say, say it again. So like that, and that's with no rounding. Okay, that's probably a better way actually to do it with no rounding. Um, for the sake of writing it out, it's sometimes nice to round. But if you're keeping numbers within your calculator, then there's no point in rounding, right? And so how we would write that at the end of the day, 5.02 uh, times 10 to the 3, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so obviously the final thing we want to do is we want to write in time. There we go. Now that's going from big to small. I mean from small, yeah, I guess from big to small. Yeah, that's how old you are in seconds. Well, yeah, if you want to be really, really precise, if you knew the exact time you were born, you could, uh, you could keep a running, running time. I think a, I think a cool, uh, listen to me now. I think a cool project would be if you were to say set your birth date and then you had this clock that told you like right down to the second and it just ran exactly how long you've been alive. Wouldn't that be cool? And you could look at it every morning. So let's uh, try one more example where instead of going from a large number, a large unit to a small unit, we go from a small unit to a large unit. So what if we want to know, let's say we have, let's make this a little interesting. Let's say we have um, one times 10 to the uh, 27 seconds, okay? And we want to know what is that in terms of years. How many years is 1 times 10 to the 27 seconds? Oh, snap. I'm pretty sure it's going to be more than 8 since this was over 16 years, um, and this is many orders of magnitude larger. <laughs> I'm thinking even more than that. I'm thinking even more than that. Well, there's, we could guess all day, or we could actually do the math. Um, so, so what we'll do first, okay, since we, we have the first kind of uh, conversion at hand, which is to, to get this, I guess, into, um, into hours, how would we go about doing that? Well, here's the first question. Will the value, in terms of years, be larger or smaller than this number? Smaller, right. So it makes sense then that we're going to want to do a division. Um, so we want to go against the hours. Um, so in one hour, we have 3,600 seconds. So notice what I did. I used the same conversion factor. However, I just reversed it. Does that make sense? Okay. I flipped her over. All right. So now we're going to cross off seconds and be in terms of hours. Can someone do that math for me with their calculator? I guess I could do it myself, too. So I think we'll get 2.8 times 10 to the 23 hours. Then let's go to days. 
and we know that in every day there's 24 of these things. Okay, so we want to cross hours off, so we, you know, orient it this way, the hours on the bottom. And essentially that makes sense, right? We want to know how many blocks of 24 hours there are in 2.8 times 10 to the 23 hours. So that's another way to think about it. How many blocks of 24 can I carve out of this amount? Um, so let's do that. Oops. So getting smaller, still a big number, but getting smaller. Um, 1.16 roughly. I gotta watch with these significant digits. I should really only have one, but I'm actually keeping it in my calculator, all the numbers, so I'm just writing the shortened versions, but I'm keeping the whole number in my calculator. So um, at the end, we can round it off. Oops, sorry. We converted to days just now. So hours are gone, and we're left in days, okay? The unit left behind, if you do this correctly, is always gonna be the unit that you end up with. Okay, so here's the conversion factor there. So now we want to go to years. Okay, so that conversion factor is dividing by 365. Yes, sir. Sorry, I just pointed out that I had this, this unit here wrong. Um, that's fixed now. Okay, it should be this unit here. Okay, so divide that by 365. And we have 3.2 times 10 to the 19 years. Well, <laughs> that's a really long time, isn't it? That is, uh, you know, many, many, many billions of years. In fact, this is more time than has elapsed since the beginning of the universe. Uh, so yeah, give you a logical question. Okay, uh, why don't we do that? I think um, you'll find the number 12 billion years to be kind of a, a rough uh, estimate of how old the universe is. So can we do 12 billion years into how many seconds? How many seconds since the universe started? Can we do that? How about I leave that as one for you guys to try? Go for it. Okay, so here's, here's the math on that. Um, here's what it looks like. Um, so some people are, are, I think, having maybe now issues with how to write in scientific notation. Is that the problem? You guys don't know scientific notation. Okay. Well, this first of all, first of all, let's discuss this number. Okay. This number does contain a lot more zeros, but I rounded it. Okay. Um, if you're thinking about 12 billion years, is getting it down to the last like one or two seconds really going to matter that much? It's like saying it's, you know, it's like saying it's um, 700 kilometers to uh, a town, right? To say it's 700 kilometers uh, and 4 meters is sort of like irrelevant. The 4 meters doesn't matter because 700 kilometers is so large. I mean, your car is 4 meters long. So why does 4 meters really matter? So it's okay to start to knock off some of these what we call insignificant digits, okay? When you go on in school and in science, you'll learn a little bit more about what is considered significant and what is not considered significant. In this case, uh, you have two significant digits here in your beginning, and so you would expect to have two significant digits in your end value, even though there's a lot of extra digits here. Now, depending on what you're being asked and what you're measuring, that may or may not be exactly true, but that's kind of a general outlook as to what we're talking about. Now, if people are having problems with understanding scientific notation, that is going to need its own video. So I'm going to stop there with this one. I think we're okay with this kind of conversion. Um, actually, just before we, we wrap up, let's do a problem that involves time and distance in the same question. Okay? So how are we going to deal with, um, let's say we have something that's going, I don't know, 15 meters every second, which is, if I write it like this, remember, it's the same thing as me saying 15 meters per, per second or 15 meters every one second. These are all equivalent ways of writing the same thing. Something moves along 15 meters every second, right? Now let's say we want to know, well, what is that in terms of kilometers every hour? How do we get it there? So let's think about that. So if we're going 15 meters every second, how many meters are we going to go in an hour, do you think? 
How many meters would we go in an hour? Okay, so the way to look at this is let's, to help those who are struggling with understanding what we want out of this, think about this as a discrete unit or idea, okay? Imagine this is one meter, so then this is 15 meters, right? Let's say. Every second, you go this unit over again. Another 15, after the second second. After the third second, after the fourth second, right? One second, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, 15 meters, 30 meters, 45 meters, 60 meters, and so on. And this continues for a whole hour. Well, we've messed with this number enough that we know that there is 3,600 seconds every hour, okay? We're going to cross this number off, and what we should get when we're done here is we should get how many meters we go in an hour. So let's do that math. Okay, so you're going to find that you go, you go 5,000, sorry, 54,000, my mistake, meters every hour. Okay, second part. This is in, in meters and we want it in kilometers. So let's deal with that number now. The hours is done. What is this in terms of kilometers? Is that a tough conversion? Right, you just divide it by 1,000. And if you want to use your, your conversions here, you go this many meters every hour and you know there's 1,000 meters in every one kilometer so we're gonna essentially just knock three zeros off to drop it down to kilometers and there you go you are going 54 kilometers per hour someone who is a very good road biker might be able to get going this fast I don't know they might okay um, so there you go that's how you that's how you do a conversion like this it's it's if you think about it logically right and make sense of it. It becomes very, very, I think, straightforward. If, you, if you're struggling, if you don't understand this, okay, you're going to have to try some problems until you get comfortable with it. How do you do that? Make some numbers up. Put a 10 in there. Put a 40 in there. What if you're asked to do it the other way around? What if you're given 100 kilometers in an hour, and you've got to put that into meters per second? What is that in meters per second? Well, hang on. Let's think about that. Let's think about that. Okay. What are we going to do here? Well, we want meters first. So can we convert 100 kilometers directly to meters easily? What is it? Right. It's it's a thousand times more. It's 100,000 meters every hour that you're going. Right. But now you want to go one thirty-six hundredth of that, don't you? Because you want to know how far you go in one second. Well, how much is a second less than an hour? Well, one second equals one thirty-six hundredth of an hour. Okay, so as I was saying, sorry, um, one second, if we know there's thirty-six hundred of them in an hour, right? Half an hour has how many seconds in it, just by doing this math? Eighteen hundred, thirty-six hundredths, right? So it's, it's just fractions, right? So we're going one thirty-six hundredth of this distance every hour. So what we will say is there is, oops, we're saying there's one, um, for every one hour, there's 3,600 seconds. Basically, that's what we're saying. Uh, yeah. So we want to divide this out by 3,600. We want 3,600 less than this. And what that should give us, I think, is 28? Okay, 27.8 meters every second okay so there we did we just did it the other way around you don't have to be mystified by this stuff there is a fairly straightforward way to do it if you think about it let's try one more just because it's fun 80 kilometers every hour in meters per second how do you do it good if you've done it right You get around 22.2 meters per second. It is the exact same method that you were doing before. Okay, as homework, here's your challenge. If there is 3.78 liters in every gallon, okay, how much money in dollars per gallon does gas cost if in Canada... It's, I don't know, I don't know what gas costs right this minute, but let's say it's, 
let's go with 98 cents. It was it was 94 cents yesterday when I looked. Apparently it's gone up, but let's go with 98 um, cents per liter. Can you, if you know this, figure out if you went down to a place that you know measures fuel in terms of gallons, can you figure out what the cost would be in terms of dollars per gallon? That is your homework. You can use the same method that we have used here, okay? And you can convert first into gallons and then into dollars per gallon. I bet you can do it if you try.